Hi there, in the last video we built this simple page using Django and Django tag it to control the models that are actually being tagged here. What we're now going to do is filter this by using Alpine.js so that when we click on a particular tag it will filter down to just those films who are tagged with that tag. So we're going to see how to build that in this video. You can grab the code from the last video on this GitHub repository here and you can get started with that. So the basis of this video is using Alpine to filter down this list of films by the tag that's been clicked. Now Alpine.js stores data in its uh, components in an X data directive. What we're going to do is we're going to return a serialized list of all of the films in the database to our Alpine component. And we're going to use Django REST framework for that. So the first step in this video, if we go to VS Code, we're going to stop the server and we're going to use the pip install Django REST framework command and that will install REST Framework in your environment. Now the next step is we want to add REST Frameworks to our settings installed apps. So scroll up to the installed apps list here and below target we're going to add REST Framework and that will give us access to REST Framework serializers and views within this project. What we're now going to do is create a serializers.py file within our core application. So let's create a new file and we'll call it serializers.py and from REST framework, we're going to import the serializers module. And we're also going to import the film model. That's the model we want to serialize. And we're going to create a class called film serializer, which will inherit from the serializers.model serializer class. Now in REST framework, a model serializer is actually similar to a model form. It contains a meta class in which you define a model. In our case, it's going to be the film model. And it also defines fields that you want to serialize. And we're going to serialize the film ID, the film name, and also the film's director. So that's the three normal fields that are on our model. If we go to models.py, we've got the name and the director, and also the ID is implicit. It's added by Django as a primary key. So we are serializing all three of those fields. Now we also want the tags associated with a film and that's one of the reasons I'm doing this video to show you another part of Django Tag It. So if we go back to the documentation for Django Tag It, there is a section on the sidebar that is about usage with Django REST framework. So we'll click that and there's a bit of detail here about why you cannot use uh, the normal serializer from Django REST framework. What we're going to do instead is use the special serializer that's defined by Django Tag It and that's the Tag It serializer. So we're going to copy this import here and we're going to bring that into our serializers.py file at the top. So we'll paste that in here. From target.serializers we're importing the target list serializer field as well as the target serializer. And we're going to extend this target serializer. So let's copy that into the definition of this class here. So it's now inheriting from the target serializer as well as the model serializer. And what that allows us to do is add this tag serializer list field and we'll add that with a key of tags and we can put that just below our class definition there and then finally we'll add the tags to the fields that we want to return so we add that to that tuple there and that should be us good to go with this serializer so just a quick recap Django Target provides some utilities for working with Django REST framework the tag it serializer, which is part of your inheritance, and then the tag list serializer field. This is a field type that you can use to return the tags to your client, as well as the other fields in your model. So that's all good. We now want to set up a Django view that's going to return the serialized film objects. So let's go to views.py, and I'm going to import the serializer that we just created. So from core.serializers, import the film serializer. That's this class that we made here. And we're also going to import a list view from Django REST framework. From REST framework.generics, we'll import the list API view. So let's scroll down and we'll create a class-based view here. And this is going to be called film list API view. And it's going to inherit from that list API view that we just imported. So the idea behind the list API view is it's going to return a list of serialized film instances. We're going to attach the model in a second. If we go to the Django REST framework documentation, there is a page here on the generic views and you can look at the list API view here. It is used for read-only endpoints that represent a collection of model instances. In our case, it's going to be a collection of films. So what we're going to do is go back to the code here and there's two fields I want to add to this list API view. The first one is a query set and that will define which objects can be returned. 
and by default this is going to be film.objects.all so all of the films in the database and the second field I'm going to add is something called serializer class and we're going to make that equal to our film serializer that we created in the serializers.py file and that's this serializer here that will return all of the fields including our tags. So the final step in the Django side of things is to go to our urls.py and we're going to add a URL for this particular view. So we'll paste this in here, it's going to be a URL with the root film list and it's going to load up that film list API view and convert it to a normal Django function view. And this is going to load up the film list API view that we defined in the views.py file. So that will serialize all the films and return them as JSON to the client. And we can actually run the server and see this in action. So let's go back to the front end here and I'm going to paste a link in here and it's the film list endpoint. And this should return a serialized list of all of the films in the database. So we have those fields that we defined, the ID, the name, the director, and importantly, we have the tags, and that's a list of all of the tags that are associated with a given model instance. And we have access to this because of these Django target tools that we've imported from the library, the target serializer, and importantly, the target list serializer field. And we have these for all of the films in the database, as you can see here. And that's because we set the views query set equal to all of these films. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get to the core of this particular tutorial. We're going to add Alpine.js to our project. So let's go to the Alpine documentation. There's an installation section and we can very easily get Alpine from a script tag here. So let's copy and paste that into our base.html file. We're going to do this below the tailwind import there. So now all of our templates that extend the base will have access to Alpine directives. And the template that we're going to create an Alpine component is this index.html template here. So we're going to add the directive x data to specify a component in Alpine. And we're going to add that to this div. This is the root tag within this content block. So let's add x dash data. And this is equal to a JavaScript object. Now we're going to add one key to this object. It's going to be the tag. And we're going to default that to an empty string for now. Now let's go back to the page so we can reiterate what we're going to achieve in this tutorial here. So what we want to do is when we click a particular tag, we want to add that to the Alpine state and store it within this key. And then we want to only show the films that are tagged with that particular tag. So we're going to progressively update this template to use Alpine in order to do that. Now the tags at the top of the page that you see here these are all contained within this paragraph tag here. It's a for loop that loops over all of the tags that we've got in the database. And for each tag, we have a button. Now, when we click that button, we want to update this state here that's stored in tag with the new tag that's been clicked. So we're going to use an Alpine on directive, uh, the shorthand for which we're going to see in a second. So let's format this a little bit better. Um, and we're going to add the click event. And when we click, what we want to do is we want to set the inner text of the button which you can see here for example mafia or crime or comedy we want to set the tag state equal to that text so we're going to reassign the tag state and we're going to set it to the element that has been clicked which is the button we're going to set it to the text content of that element and that basically corresponds to the tag name for the button that's been clicked and this dollar sign el this is a magic property in alpine which we can quickly see if we scroll down to the magics section and it refers to the current DOM node. So when we click a button, the current DOM node is the button itself. And when we look at the text content, we're just gonna get the name of the tag. And that's gonna be assigned to this tag key here. Now, the next thing we want to do is we also want to store, as well as the current tag, we want to get a list of all the serialized JSON films. Now, to begin with, I'm gonna set this to an empty list. And then we can use another directive in Alpine to fetch that when this page first loads. So let's format this a little bit better and we can then use the x init directive to fetch a list of these films when the page loads. Now we can go to the documentation of Alpine and again x init is documented here. And we're going to copy this line here and this is basically fetching some JSON from a server and it's converting it to a JavaScript object which is exactly what we want to do. So we'll paste that in here and we can update the names of the key. So we're reassigning to the films key. So we're going to change that to films. And then the endpoint that we're going to fetch from is called film list. And that will correspond to this here in our urls.py. So that should bring the films from the back end into the Alpine state. And then we can replace the Django template for loop 
with an X4 directive from Alpine. So X4, film in films. And we need to close that template loop under the A tag. So for each film in the films state that we have here, initially an empty list, but eventually will be populated by data from the server. For each one of those, we want to render out this A tag. Now for each film, we're gonna render the text using the X text attribute in Alpine. So I'm gonna get rid of these here and we can reference this with the X text attribute and it's gonna be film.name. And let's copy that down below, get rid of the films director. Uh, for the director, we're simply gonna say X text equals film.director. And finally, we're gonna get rid of this loop here uh, for all of the tags. We're returning the tags as JSON now, as you saw using Django REST framework. So we can actually directly access those from the response. So to this small, I'm gonna add an X text attribute and we're gonna set this equal to a JavaScript expression. It's gonna be film.tags.join and we can join them with a comma. And we'll add a space after the comma. So let's see if this works now. If we refresh the page and we're getting an exception and it's that the end for is expected. So I think we've left something in the template here so it's down at the bottom, this end four, we can get rid of that and refresh the page. So now we're still rendering these films out, but now we're using Alpine JS directives to do so. Now the question is, when we click a button, is it updating the state with the correct tag? So let's see that quickly at the top. We're gonna to create a paragraph tag with an X text attribute equal to the tag. And we can simply close that off. And we should then see what the tag is at the top here. When we click Cyberpunk, that's what appears. If we click comedy, that is what appears. So this is updating correctly. So we can remove that. We know that that is working. So the last step in this initial part of the video is to simply filter the films down by the tag that's currently selected. So we're gonna use a JavaScript expression for this too. And we're gonna use the films.filter function here. Now arrays in JavaScript have this filter function. And for each film in the list, we're gonna check whether the tags include the particular tag in our state. So there's a function called includes in JavaScript, which will check whether the parameter passed in exists within the array. So let's save that now and we can go back to the page. And you see that we don't have any films, but when we click one of the tags, such as Mafia, it will load up the Mafia movies. And that will update when we click Cyberpunk or Sci-Fi. So the basics of this system are working already. We can click a tag and it will update what's shown on the page. So what I want to do now is I want to add another button for all of the films. We want to give users the ability to see every film in the database. So let's go back to the template and we'll go to the top. It's this for loop here that renders a button for every tag. Now underneath that, I'm gonna copy this button and add one more button here at the top. And this button is simply gonna say all. So let's save that and go back to the page. And you see now we have this extra button that says all at the end. We're now gonna use that to show all of the films by default when the page first loads and also obviously when it's clicked as well. So let's start by setting the tag by default to all. So that's gonna be what's stored within that tag key to begin with when the page loads. And then when we click a button that can update what's stored later on. Now what we're gonna do now is we're gonna change this filter statement here. This controls which films are displayed. Now we want to check if the all button is what's stored uh, within the tag key. And we're gonna make use of the JavaScript or operator um, in this particular function. Now first of all, we're gonna check whether the tag that's currently set is equal to all, because if it's equal to all, we want to by default return every single film. So we'll, we'll make that one of the conditions that we're checking here. So if it's equal to all, we'll return it or and we use the two vertical pipes in JavaScript for an OR operator. So this will tell us that if this is false, the second part of the expression will be evaluated. And the second part checks that the given tag that's set is in the film's tags list. And if that's true, it's gonna include this film in the results. So let's save now and we can go back to the page. And because the default state in the X data is set to all, and because of this expression here, which will evaluate to true, we now see all of the films when the page first loads. And when we click crime, that will filter down to crime. And when we click all again, it will reload every single film. So that's a pretty cool effect. We, we now have covered the case when the page first loads and we want to show all of the films. And now it can update dynamically when we click a particular tag. So the final thing I want to do is show some feedback to the user so that they know which particular tag is clicked at a given time. Now to do this, we're gonna bind the class attribute of these buttons 
to some alpine state. So let's see what I mean by that if we go back to the template now. The buttons are contained at the top here within the for loop and there's one below it as well. Now we have classes here which among other things define the background colours of the buttons. So I'm, what I'm going to do is remove all these background button uh, attributes or rather class names. We're going to remove them from the buttons because we're going to control this through class binding using Alpine. So let's get rid of all of this and we can rejoin the video in a second when I've removed all of the styles from this and as well as that from the button below here. And once you've done that you should have removed all class names that contain the BG for the background because we're now going to render that conditionally and we're going to say that if a button is clicked at a given time then the background should be green otherwise it should be that blue colour we've seen before. Now you can see the, the colours have gone so we need to fix this. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the binding property of Alpine. So there is a binding syntax where you do a colon and we're going to bind the class attribute. So we're going to give additional classes to this button and these are on top of what's defined up here. And we're going to make the classes for the background green if the tag that's set in the state is matching the element text content. So basically if the tag in the Alpine state matches the button that we're looking at at a given time then we know that is the selected button and in that case this ternary will evaluate to true and we want to use these classes so we're setting background color to green and in the case where it's false we're going to set them to blue so the second part of the ternary expression after the colon will paste in the blue classes from tailwind so that should be everything we need we are binding the class but we also need to do that for the button below which is not part of the for loop so let's copy this line here and we can paste it down below as well. So once we've done that, we can go back to the page and refresh this page. And we now see we have, by default, all is now green. And that's because it's the first selected button, the first selected tag in our list. If we select Mafia, that will update to green. And this will happen for any movie that we select, or rather any tag that we select. We now clearly see which tag we're looking at at a given time and the list is still filtering based on that selection. So in this video we've successfully used Alpine to filter our list of movies by the selected tag and we can use Alpine to also conditionally render colours and any other CSS based on attributes that we have in our state. So that's all for this video. We've learned more about Django Tagit. We've learned how to integrate with Django REST Framework. We've written some views in Django REST Framework and we're using Alpine to control which films are set on our page. So that's all for this video. If you've enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.